Hey everybody, welcome to the Morning Devo with Boo. Super cool chapter we're going over today. Man, chapter 53, unbelievable. So, um, you are in the Morning Devotion with Boo. Boalette. That's my name. I go through the Bible, just book by book, verse by verse, actually through the scriptures. It's kind of um, interesting. Most people, when they do devotions, don't go this way. They kind of go all over the place. But hopefully you've seen the importance and, and you see the importance of just going through it and just taking chapter by chapter. Now, I am a Southern California kid, so I tend to have a, a you know, a perspective. And uh, raised super secular, super progressive, and uh, and you know you could see how how my life has changed, how I just by going through the Bible like this, um, you know you get an idea of God and humanity and the problem and why we don't see God and why God is distant and what God does to remedy our situation. Um, we see just the truth of just where we really are at as human beings from the Bible. Um, it, it certainly um, has a bleak uh, a picture of the human condition, that we are a lost group of people, a lost species. And that, that, that's seen everywhere. It's seen without and it's seen within. It's seen in things that are outside that are dying and decaying, and it's also seen within us through our attitudes and our actions. And, and we tend to idolize everything that we uh, gravitate to, no matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. We will idolize it, set it up on a pest pedestal, and worship it. That pride is just, unfortunately, a part of us, and we become super prideful in everything. So that is, you know, it's great. You get so many answers. And now we get an answer to who the arm of the Lord is, or let, let's say the action of this person, the arm of the Lord. That is Yahweh, but it's an extension of Yahweh. It's very interesting. We saw from the first three pages of the Bible that God is outside of time and space, everywhere within time and space, and could be on a dot on the earth all at the same time. Pretty interesting. And that's just from the first three pages of the Bible, right? Yeah. So the Trinity is not a New Testament concept in the slightest, right? It's a just from the beginning. We've seen it over and over and over. This idea that Yahweh's out there, he's everywhere, and he's also present. He has a presence, if you will at times on the planet and but there's always this kind of veiling with god there's a righteousness to which he rules in he is righteous he is holy he is everlasting and his righteousness demands judgment against sin if you don't want a god who's perfect then god would have to compromise perfection so when we get to Isaiah 53, you could always check out the archives, by the way, at my YouTube channel, Bo Willette. Just go to YouTube, type in Bo Willette, and you'll get it. So Isaiah, Isaiah 53 reads like this. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? Two things. Isaiah, member is sharing news with the people of Israel, the southern kingdom, Judea. They have a lot of news networks, like I've said, CNN, Fox Sports, or Fox News, um, MSNBC, and the like. And God says, man, you've been listening to the wrong prophet, right? Those news networks have led you astray. They're like wrong prophets. They're leading you a certain particular direction, emotionally, spiritually, physically even. He says, you need to turn. And this is the message with Isaiah. You need to repent and turn towards me. Um, I promise that I would be there for you. I promise I protect you and be there. But you've gone to other counselors. You've gone to other people for your geopolitical, military, you know, all your needs. So Isaiah says, hey, who has believed my, our report? Who has really believed God's news? 
And that's what the Bible is, is God's news. Very interesting, right? Put it that way. And it says, and who has his arm been revealed? And so we're going to see a little bit about this arm, right? And it says, who has, who, who, who has Yahweh revealed this powerful arm to? It says, my servant. So this is the arm. We see this. And by the way, in this uh, video, I wanted to link it with a wonderful study I asked Sean uh, to do, Sean Richards, one of our apologists, to put together on the arm of the Lord. So it's linked in just the main post. And uh, I, you'll click it. It'll be a page to our website, and you can see the actual study right there. And hopefully that'll help you, too, in your further study of the arm of the Lord. It says, My servant, who is the arm, grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance. Now, we know this is going to be from the line of David. We know it's going to be a shoot, a branch. We know the branch is going to be called Yahshua. We get that from Zechariah. We haven't gotten there yet in our time of devotions. But we know all about this person already from the Psalms, all kinds of things, right? He would be a father. He'd be an advocate. He would be a judge. He would teach in the temple. He would uh, redeem his people. I mean, just all kinds of things. And it says, um, there's nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. Now, this is cool because the arm of the Lord now is revealed as who? A man. Whoa. Whoa. That's interesting. Now, we already knew that from other passages uh, of the flow of this Messiah that would come on the scene. Remember page three of the Bible? There would be a Messiah from a, bo a child that would be born from a woman that would restore all things, would redeem, that would be, in a sense, too, everlasting father, prince of peace, right? Wonderful counselor, all this, almighty God right? And, and it's Yahweh. Yahweh keeps saying, this is me. I'll do these things. There's no other redeemer but me. There's no other judge but me. There's no other gods, you know? And he says, but I'm going to do this. How? Through my arm, through this extension, right? And it says that he was despised, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. There's a part of this arm that is sorrowful. You know, it's neat to know that not only did Jesus have incredible joy, and we get that from a passage that's cool, uh, in the book of Hebrews that talks about he was uh, anointed with the oil of gladness, but also that he was a, a man of sorrows. In a, in a real way, he's a man, just like us, part of mankind, humankind, right? Going through sorrows. Interesting, right? This Yahweh character, right, I should say Yahweh deity, will have a character, an extension, that's really him, but an extension of him, but also a man, you know, and you start going, whoa, this is kind of interesting. It's confusing. I don't want to believe it. Well, nah, we don't throw it off just because it's hard, difficult. We have to just let it speak. It's a man. Of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. Hmm, have you ever turned your back on someone and looked the other way? Have you ever done something like that? Where you knew someone didn't deserve, you know, that kind of action, but you did that anyway. You turned your back on them. Sometimes in a marriage, people can turn their back on their spouse. Hmm. Bummer, right? And it says he was despised, yet we did not care. He was hated by people, but yet this man, we didn't care. Pretty sad, right? The arm of the Lord is now revealed on the earth and is this man and is going through incredible sorrow, but yet the human be beings just don't care. Now, isn't this us? Isn't this so true of human 
means. We say we care, we say we do, we do some things, but then other times we don't care. It's weird. Sometimes we do care, sometimes we don't care. We're kind of off and on all the time. And this this arm of the Lord will be despised. There will be something about him that people will despise. You know, go to the college campus, talk about Jesus, mention Jesus, see if Jesus is despised. It says, yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. Interesting. Actually, this person carried our sorrow, right? This person carried all of our, the weight of our sin, right? It wasn't his own sin, but it was our sin that brought him such great grief. But notice we think that he's the one who's the sinner. He's the one. Isn't that crazy how today with all the videos that are out there, how many videos are against, about uh, against Jesus, right? He is the sinner. He is the bad guy. So many, right? This is what it says right here. See, it already says it 700 years before he's born, right? That we thought his troubles were a punishment from God. God's given him what he deserves, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. Whoa. The arm of the Lord will be on the earth. It will be a man, and he will be pierced as a man. And he will be crushed for our sins, not for his own, but for us. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. He goes through beating and whipping. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. We have left God's path to follow our own. Mm, isn't that so true? Can you relate to that passage, verse 6, that all of us, like sheep, have gone astray? I mean, can't you see that in your life? I mean, I mean, if you're out there and you're not a Christian, and you, can't you read that and just go, yeah, that's our world. I mean, how can you not see that we all, like sheep, have gone astray? That man, we, we leave God's path so quickly, it's unbelievable. And it says, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Isn't that interesting? Now you see this separation. Yahweh, yes, but the Lord now lays on him the arm, which is the extension of Yahweh. Very interesting. We see two distinct people really coming out of this. That the Lord is not Jesus in the sense that there's no God, you know, in heaven as Jesus is on the earth. No. The Father is still in heaven on the earth, or in uh, heaven, while the Son is on the earth. The reason why I bring that up, up is because there are weird teachings that say like Yahweh left heaven and came to the earth and then heaven was absent from Yahweh and now he's on the earth and then he goes back and that's not what's being described. I just hate to tell you, it's just not what's there. Yeah. It's, you know, certainly Yahweh is still where Yahweh always is and yet Yahweh lays on him. All of our sins, all of our iniquity, all of our bending, distorting, all of our jackness, <laughs> I'd like to say. Man, isn't that amazing? The arm of the Lord on the earth, sorrowful over all of our sins, not his own, beaten, pierced, right? Interesting, piercing. You know, was that happening in Isaiah's day? Mm -mm. But yet, remember, God says, I'm going to show you in this book. He says, I'm going to show you things so that you know it's me. So you know it's God that's, you know, saying this. That you know without a shadow of doubt that there is a deity and I am he. That there is no other. 
And so I am going to foretell everything. I'm going to tell you just as I did in the past, and there's a record of it. That's called the Bible. I'm going to give a record of what I'm going to do from here on too. And that's what's going on. Yeah, that's why we have a Bible. It is the record. It is the court records of Yahweh's working in the world. You're without excuse. I'm without excuse. It's all there. It says, He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shears. Interesting, Jesus is called what? The Lamb of God. We see that from uh, his cousin, John the Baptist, called him that. We see that also in the book of Revelation, that Jesus is depicted as the Lamb of God, right? The Lamb. He's not only from the lion, he's not only the lion of the tribe of Judah, the strong arm of the Lord, but he's also the Lamb, right? And he was like a sheep, like a lamb led to the slaughter. He did not open up his mouth. Man, when people come at me, do I open up my mouth? When people come at me and they have accusations and everything like that, do I do I open up or do I just remain silent like the Lord? Hmm. And it says, unjustly condemned, he was led away. He, this arm of the Lord will have an injustice to him. He will be a part of a court system that is corrupt. That the power structure will be against him. Not only will the common people hate him, but he will be hated by those in judicial office. Even though he's led before them, he will not open up his mouth. Even though he's unjustly condemned in a court, he will be led away. Interesting. It's sad to think that this would happen to Yahweh's extension, the Redeemer, the one who will teach in the temple. All this, the one who is from Yahweh. And yet, this is what's being described 700 years before the birth of Christ. And it says, No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream, kind of at the high time of his life. You know, in your 30s, man, you're ripping. It says, but he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. Mm. Man, just think, your sins, my sins, the rebellion, you know? And when I think of the rebellion, I think of Star Wars, you know? The rebellion, you know, some movie or something about the rebellion, you know, a group of people that rebel. That's us. We rebelled against Yahweh. Yeah, you know, someone shares the Bible with you, and what do you do? Tear them apart, right? You, in a sense, you cuss at them. You get mad at them because they share the Bible with you. Yeah, that's, that's what humans have done. Yeah, we've rebelled in pretty serious ways. And there's many reels on Instagram showing people doing just that. Yeah, I can see myself in them. All that rebellion, all that hatred, right? For he had done no wrong and had never deceived anybody. He didn't come out. He didn't trick anybody. Yet he was buried as a criminal and he was put in a rich man's grave. So he was part of this kangaroo court. And it says that he would be tried like a, a criminal. Right? He was buried. It says with a rich man's grave. Very interesting, right? So even though he was, uh, you know, he was killed, buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. It's interesting that Jesus died the death of a criminal. A very gnarly criminal. You know, capital punishment type of stuff. And that's how he was treated. 
And this is what it's talking about with the arm of the Lord. The arm of the Lord is going to go through this. And it says, but it was Yahweh, the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have man, many descendants. Isn't this amazing? His life is made an offering for sin. I mean, underline that. His life is made an offering for sin, for our rebellion. I mean, isn't this amazing, the God of the Bible? That the God of the Bible doesn't stay distant, but literally doesn't just send like a messenger, hey, go do this, Michael the Archangel, go do this, or some other cre 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 uh, creature. But instead, it's him. It's his strong arm, but yet very much him. He feels. He understands. I mean, the God of the Bible understands you more than you ever know. Think of the love to come into this world and to give your life as an offering to bring back a rebellious people. Not only rebellious, but your creation have killed you. They have hated you. The, the creation has rebelled to the place of hatred, violence against you. That's what's being described here. And yet... It pleased Yahweh to do this. What a mind blower. It pleased God to, to go and enter into the world and to be that son that would be born on page three. Isn't that amazing? All the way back on page three of the Bible, when it says a son would be born of a woman that would crush Satan, that is God saying it's going to be me. I mean, that's a mind blower that God would love you and me that much to involve himself in such intimate detail ways to win us back. Man, that's a radical, radical love. I mean, that's a love that you just don't see. I mean, that kind of insane love. I mean, insane in the sense of, I hate using that word, but in the sense of just radical, man. It's That's my Southern California you know, slang coming out. Sorry about that, because cause there's nothing insane about God. He is not insane in the slightest. He is the most sane. We are the insane ones. <clears throat> we are the rebellious ones. But in our minds, it is kind of insane because we don't see it. We don't have it. It is so different from us. Wow. He makes his life an offering for sin and he will ha have many descendants. Many people will follow him. There will be many offspring of this person. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. Hmm. There will be... He's, he's out, he, he gets put to death, but it's interesting. He's alive, and he lives long. <laughs> and it says, and he, when he sees all that he accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. Isn't this amazing? It talks about a life that goes on everlasting. Not only that, but a resurrection here. He will see. He will see all of his offspring. And it says he will um, be satisfied with the work of himself being that offering for all these people that are trusting in him, his offspring. He will see everything that he was accomplished by his anguish, and he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous. Many to be counted righteous. Isn't that cool? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. So there will be a time where we will trust in the arm of the Lord, and the arm of the Lord, Lord will count many righteous. Isn't that cool? By our faith. 
for he will bear all their sins. Oh, is that cool? I mean, the whole chapter is an underliner. And it says, And I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. So we know he died, but he is back and he's seeing his offspring. And it says he will be counted among the re- uh, he he was counted among the rebels, meaning he was like us. He was counted as one of us. He died as someone who all the sins were placed on him, as someone who was rebellious, though he wasn't. He was that offering. He took our sin upon him. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. Wow, I love the New Living Translation version. It's so kind of blunt, right? He bore the sins of many and interceded, prayed for the rebels, and they have now become his offspring through trusting in him. He has bore your sins. See, someone has bore your sins. Someone has bore my sins. I mean, isn't that not the best news ever? Is that not the best ever, ever news, the good news? That your sins have been bore. Someone has paid the price for your sin. See, there's a huge separation from us and God. And we've been reading about this separation over and over and over and over. And that's why we can't see God out there. And yet God will remedy it by this strong arm. And we see all that the arm's going to do. Now, does the arm sound like anybody? Does the arm hit you? Who is this arm? I mean, we living, we're living in 2024. Has anyone in our history maybe fit who the arm of the Lord is? Just read through this. Someone who is an extension of Yahweh, who's amongst the people, who is beaten, who bore the burden of the people, who people criticized, hated, and pierced them, though he redeemed them and his life was an offering for their sin. And he also rose to see his offspring, those that trust in him, those he died for. Interesting. People have to deal with the Bible because the Bible is so clear on who this arm of the Lord is. This is what Jesus is constantly referring to. He's always talking as though he is the arm of the Lord. And so it's a great one. Man, what a chapter. I mean, man, mind blower, beautiful, love of God stuff. I mean, he loves you so much. I mean, you are inept, incapable, unable, and yet powerless, right? Yeah, he has come to your rescue. Doesn't matter what you've done. You are part of the rebellion. I am part of the rebellion, and he's come for us. I mean, such a cool thing. For a SoCal kid like me, super rebellious, man, that's the best news ever in the world. Man, I got to lay down my pride, lay down all that, oh, I think I got it all together. When it's just so clear when you read the Bible that it is truly the hand of God. It is very God-breathed. No one could predict these things. No one could make these things happen to such fine detail. This is no other than the scriptures, the words of the living God. I mean, you have to pay attention to that. And if you don't, then you are not reasonable. You're not being reason. You're not using reason at all. You've become irrational, you know. <clears throat> Man, an intense chapter, super beautiful. God loves you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Hmm, Right here, Isaiah 53. Arm of the Lord revealed a man on the planet dying for the sins of the world and raising from the dead, having a long life. 
being man seeing his offspring very cool okay we got through 53 man that was good you guys have a great day great weekend bye-bye